If you lose, you will get none of your money. The paramutual system that they use in horses is different. And it makes a difference in the way people think about things. Suppose, let's say, I took my computer and I went into this casino and I sit at a roulette wheel and I type something in on my computer, I bet and I win. And I type something in on my computer and I bet and I win. And I type on my computer and I bet and I win. What is going to happen to me? They will want to make a guess of what will happen to me. I will be, some, some strong person will pick me up and throw me out of the room. Does everybody see that? Now, suppose let's say I go to Happy Valley and the racetrack and I bring my computer and I type something in and I bet and I win. And I type something in and I bet and I win. And I type something in and I bet and I win. The Hong Kong Jockey Club people will come to me. What will they do to me? They will shake my hand, say, thank you for coming. Please keep betting. What is the difference? The difference is that when every dollar that I bet at the Hong Kong Jockey Club, the Jockey Club is taking 20% of that and keeping it. If I win, I am not taking money from the Jockey Club. I am taking money from the other people who are betting. Does everybody see what the difference is? So I think this makes horse racing tracks much friendlier. No one really wants me to lose. You go to a casino, they want you to lose, and they're going to make sure you lose. Somehow, you're probably going to lose when you go to a horse track also, but at least no one demands it. So by analyzing um, how often different bets had paid off, what had they paid off in the past, I could make a guess for any particular bet I made, what was the likely payoff if, in fact, it won. And so I would say that the, the, the one, two, three trifecta will probably pay off $163 now. And if the probability of winning, that would seem to tell me whether or not I should bet on it. Am I now ready to make money? And the answer is unfortunately no. What other factor do I have to consider? Well, remember that when I bet on the pool, I need to know how much money I should bet. And remember that when I make a bet, the more money I bet, if I win, I will get a, a, a bigger fraction of the pool. But if I bet too much money, I can't take more money except what the other people have put in the pool. Let me try to explain that again. When I bet, I am getting a fraction of the other people's money that was bet, right? The more times I bet on this outcome, the higher the fraction I will get. But there's also a diminishing return, that the more I bet, the less advantageous it is for me, each extra dollar I bet. So I had to figure out how my bets were going to affect the payoff. In fact, this is why real people, smart people, do not bet at horse racing tracks, or investors do not invest at horse racing tracks. They invest in the stock market. And the biggest reason is that when you make a bet in the stock market, if it's a big company, there's so many people betting on that stock that when I buy a share of Microsoft, it doesn't do very much to the price of Microsoft. If I bought a billion shares of Microsoft, Microsoft would go up, right? But Highlight, unfortunately, had very little money betting with it. And so it was very, very hard for me to make money because there wasn't that much money in the pool for me to take, even if I had the right answer. So this is why I did not get rich from Highlight is that there wasn't enough money in the pool, even though I had an advantage. It did not pay to bet a large amount of money because my advantage would go away. But I could do some modeling and eventually figure out what my impact is and whether or not it was still advantageous for me to bet after I did that. So now what happened? Well, now I had a system that I think could actually um, you know, model highlight and what the betting outcomes were successfully. So each night what our program did 
was go over to the internet, download the schedule of who was going to play highlight the next day. Um, because I had analyzed the results of all previous matches, I knew the skill of each player, and I could then run a, a Monte Carlo simulation a half a million times per game and figure out what the probability of each possible betting outcome happening was. I could then take a look at our payoff model and decide whether or not it was an advantageous bet. And then if it was an advantageous bet, decide if it would stay an advantageous bet if I actually put money on it, or if, if even my putting in the smallest amount of money would cause it to suddenly become disadvantageous. Then what I did was program the computer to phone the bets in. This was actually kind of fun. How many people have ever had a dial-up modem? Anybody in the under be older people with computers, perhaps? They used to be the way that you would connect to a com the internet was you would type, you would have a, a, a piece of hardware called a modem that would dial something and connect over the phone lines. Pa, 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 pa. It would do when you'd ask it to type in the numbers. Well, the Connecticut betting operation had a system where you could sit there and type things in on your telephone to enter what bet to make. So I programmed my computer over the modem to pretend to be a person typing in on one of these phone things. And sure enough, it was able to enter the program. And so in fact, when I was running this, there was no involvement of me at all. The computer would figure out who would win. The computer would decide who to bet on. The computer would even phone the bets in for me. And I would just watch and see how we did. So how did we do? Well, the top graph shows our bankroll as a function of when we were running this. And as you can see, we started out with a relatively small bankroll, OK, and blew it up by a factor of, um, at the time, depending on how you counted it, we, we started out with $250 and turned it into $800. That gave us a capital return of 227% and a return of 18% per bet. So basically, we ended up doing quite well. But eventually, the system broke because of a software bug. <laughs> this is a proof that we actually won, and that I'm not making up the story. That, that shows my betting winnings. So after a while, I got another student to work to fix the program. But um, the trouble was that at this point, the front on that we were betting on was a place in Connecticut called um, Milford and that they closed because Highlight is becoming not so popular in the United States, and it went out of business, just like your, your, your Highlight, I think, went out of business in Moncow. It turns out that there are still are some Highlight frontons, but because of the way the laws work in the United States, it's illegal to use the telephones to place bets. That's how they used to catch gangsters in the movie, who are sort of Al Capone. Okay, they used to catch the gangsters because it was illegal to place bets over the telephone system. So, um, so I got out of the highlight gambling system business and donated my winnings to charity. Um, and I wrote my book. So, um, so here is my highlight book. And it's sort of been fun because I get to meet lots of interesting people. That's how I got the invitation from here. And that's how I met the people here. And I also get in, in, hear from a lot of interesting people um, with criminal records, who I find out about by Googling. Okay, so I encourage you to Google somebody before you get too involved with them. Anyway, for, uh, if you want to check out the website of the story, uh, go to hightech.com. And, uh, you know, um, thank you for your listening.